show you it's grooving. I'm feeling it because it's going to be. We're about to get it going. Our happiness is showing. We're rocking it because it's going to be. Great day. Great day in Houston. Great day. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. For all of our pet lovers, did you see the video of the woman reunited with her dog after being separated for two weeks? Sweet moments like this are a reminder of the bond we have with our pets. Like anyone we love, we want to keep them safe. So here to help you make sure your pets are protected during the hot summer months in particular is Karen Doc Halligan, Chief Veterinary Officer for the Lucy Pet Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. Aw, okay. So this is not my dog, but this is uh, Harley. And the reason why I'm holding Harley is because I spilled coffee on myself <laughs> earlier. <laughs> oh, no, we'll blame it on Harley. Yes. Harley, did you do that? <laughs> okay. Lucy Pet Foundation, explain yes. what that is. Because there, there are so many pets mm -hmm. out there that are struggling, and so we have organizations that can help address almost yes. any need. Well, the Lucy Pet Foundation is a nonprofit designed to help stop the animals getting killed in the shelter. Every 10 seconds, a dog or a cat is getting killed. We're going around doing free mobile spay-neuter surgeries. In Los Angeles, we have a contract. We've done up to 20,000 surgeries. We're trying to raise money to have a mobile here in Houston. Oh. I'm about halfway there, 150,000. I need another 150,000 to come and do free surgeries for you and stop this the This is euthanasia. completely preventable in that Absolutely. sense, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. So when it comes to keeping our pets safe, the, the first thing to do is make sure that you really have a pet that's not going to produce other pets that are they're going to go. So that's yes. a great thing Spay there. And neuter. Yeah. But um, there are certain things that are out of sight, out of mind for us that really can impact our animals' health. Let's start with yes. parasites, especially in the summer. Warm months? Yes. So what happens, I know it's kind of a gross subject, yeah. <laughs> but, you're but a veterinarian, dogs, you know, you know they kind do. of lick their butt, they mm -hmm. eat the whatever, and all pets should have a fecal done once a year. Now, you don't need to bring in a bucket of stool. People come with a bucket <laughs> of stool. We get something like this from your vet. We just need a little bit. And But, you know, some of those parasites that the sweet animals can get, you can get. Oh. So you should take your pet in once a year and get that stool checked. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Heat stroke. In fact, someone asked a question earlier about, you know, if you give a dog a good summer haircut and just a cool bowl of water, is that enough? Yes. Well, and here I brought this little tip because, yes, they need to have water all day. And sometimes when there's more than one dog, they will tip the water bowl over. So this is a toilet plunger. Uh -huh. Stake that in and then just thread oh. the butt pan like that. And then the dogs won't tip it over. Okay. So that's a good good tip. Yeah. All right. Oftentimes we see people love their pets so much that they can't be, you know, disconnected from them. Yes. And there are lots of restaurants and stores and stuff that really yes. cater to people coming in with their pets and all. But yes. we see them driving around town. Yes. And I saw it just this morning. The dog was sitting in the woman's lap. Cute to look at. Yes. Take a picture, but not safe. Yes. No, every year pets, even kids mm -hmm. die. People accidentally forget they're in the car. They run out there. It will be a few minutes. Please don't leave your pets in the car. It becomes a coffin in a matter of seconds. So mm. leave them at home. Make sure they have the water. And also, I forgot to mention the pavement. We, they burn their little pads right off. So you have wow. to check the surface, put your hand down. Can you hold your hand there for five seconds? If you can't, carry them or wait to walk them. Um, In on the evening grass. hours, yes. maybe, yeah. Or you can get, oops, sorry, you can get the booties. They have little booties for them too if you have to walk on the pavement, but pets burn themselves every year in their yeah. feet. Yeah, all right. Um, get the yearly vet exam, kind of like yes. just with humans, and that's what yes. we're looking at more so now. Before, we would just kind of uh, disregard those things, but pets are a lot more like us than we think they are. Yeah, and I think people don't realize, okay, she's going to age seven years in one year. Mm -hmm. I'm doctor, dentist, um, ophthalmologist. If you don't take your dog in for maybe two years, that's 14 years without her seeing a vet. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to check the lymph nodes. We're going to listen to her. We're going to look at her teeth. Ooh, she needs some metal. <laughs> um, but we're going to tell you, look, how to extend your pet's life. So we're there to help you be a better pet parent. Yeah. You know what's great about her when she ages? 
You won't see the gray because she's gray already. <laughs> That's this true. Is, this is a good thing right here. Okay. Um, block that sun. Yes. You know, skin cancer is very common in dogs and cats. Really? Yes. And especially the white, short haired breeds. Yeah. And then, of course, it's hard to see for a lot of us because you're, you can't because see really the hair. The yeah. So it's, it, the parts where they get uh, skin cancer are on the bridge of their nose and the animals that have the white coats uh -huh. on their ears. So. They make sunscreen for dogs, but if you have SPF 30, you take that, mix it with a little Vaseline like this, mm -hmm. and then you just put that like on their nose, on the tips of their ears. It won't hurt them if they lick it. Um, also, the belly. We see the most skin cancer on the belly yeah. because of sun reflex. They have sun suits that you put, they're really cute, and they block the UV rays. So if your pet's white and spends a lot of time outside, please get a sunsuit or yeah. do it later in the day or I know my dog will fall asleep like on his back, right, outside, right? And baking, so. and they get skin cancer like yeah. we do. So. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, insect bites, and we know fleas and things like that can be so vicious, and the mosquitoes, of course, yes, and they get worm. other diseases and things yes. because of that. And you know, when I did spay and neutering out here, I couldn't believe how many dogs and cats have heartworm, and it's 100% preventable with the pill so you, you know go to your vet and get that preventable also this is something uh, every pet owner should have this is diphenhydramine it's a fancy word but it's Benadryl okay okay yeah. and the dosage one milligram per pound so a 10 pound dog would get 10 milligrams, one milligram per pound. If you think your pet got stung by something, they can die from a bee sting. Right. Give them a Benadryl. It's super, super safe. Have some Benadryl. They make liquid. Children's Benadryl, one milligram per pound. It's safe to give a dog or cat and could save their life. Yeah, and pay attention. Just do like a weekly once over. Yes, and I brought this. I know this seems silly, but I'll tell you, Deborah, if you pick up on something early, like a lump, and you're like, oh, what's that? It's a lump. Take it to the vet. I can take it out. Boom. You wait. It gets huge. Yeah, things and can move quickly. Yes. And then the cancer has spread, and I can't save your dog. Yeah. Okay. Just like we pet proof, our, our, just like we proof our homes for our young kids, if you have pets in the house, like dogs and cats yes. and things like that, they're curious, just like yes. a toddler would yes. be. You got to make sure that you have things that can be toxic to them out of the way. The biggest one we see is anti antifreeze coolant. Mm. The dogs go out in the garage, they lick it, they'll be dead in uh, one day. A, wow. a teaspoon for this dog of yeah. that antifreeze that's leaked out of your car, and it tastes good. And they'll go out and lick it. So yeah, go around, get on all fours, look in your yard, do you have poisonous plants or prescription medications? Number one poisoning is they eat your pills. Wow. So keep them out of reach. And then some things, of course, that, that won't bother us could bother dogs, like if you have some real chocolate Laying oh around, right? yes, they can Fair get into that. onions. Oh, really? Kill a dog. Wow. Yes. So okay. know the list of dangerous foods too. Yeah. Yes. We saw that reunion with that dog at the top of the I show. Know, there. So, cute. so many people are separated from their pets, and yes. if they just had a tag with identification or a chip, yes. or you know, they could have a reunion. Yes. And every viewer right now, look at your dog's tag. This is my old dog's tag. The number gets eroded, mm. and so what happens is you might have a tag you can't read the number or the number's incorrect. My big pet peeve is the collars that don't fit. Whenever they come to, we do like 60 surgeries a day, two uh -huh. doctors, and an animal's running around and never fails, it gets out, and then boom, another dog attacks it. Your collar, the dog's collar has to fit with, it sounds so like common sense, but only two fingers, Deborah. Should go underneath. Look, yeah. see, that dog can't get out. The other thing is they have these martingale collars that tighten like this. You can also do a harness, but that's a number one reason why pets get hit by a car. They get away from their owner because the owner doesn't they, have the collar fitter. Yeah, and then of course the other thing is I, my cat, I, every now and then I'll look outside when she gets out and roams around, uh, I'll see the collar in the bushes because she has one of those pop-away collars. She has collars, the breakaway, which, yeah, which, breakaway which makes sense. Yes. But if she doesn't have it on, then how do we identify her? We did microchip her. Absolutely, and that's the little chip that we put in between the shoulder blades as long as it's registered. People mm -hmm. think, oh, it's a low jack. It's not. Yeah. You have to go in and register it so if somebody finds your pet and we scan it, we know who to take it to. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, does your dog scratch a lot? Is your cat a jerk? <laughs> Isn't that the nature of some cats? Okay, how do you make it nicer? When we come back, Doc Halligan is answering some of your pet-related personality questions, too.